All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Late Night Beats. In this week's episode, I'd like to tell you about my favorite three products that I saw at Superbooth 2019. Let's get right into it. I was lucky enough to attend Superbooth in Berlin this year, and I'd like to thank the organizers for granting me the press pass, which gave me the opportunity to talk to a lot of people and see a lot of gear. And normally, I'm not the type of person to enjoy those events because I'm usually afraid of crowds, but actually, it was a lot of fun and I felt really comfortable in there. It was a complete nerd fest. Synth geeks from all over the world were there, and we had a lot of fun. In this video, I'd like to give you my three favorite things that I saw at Superbooth. These are not necessarily news, some of those products were announced before, but it was my first opportunity to see them firsthand and I'd like to share my experiences with you. Before I go into my top three products, I'd like to give you honorable mentions. First of all, the court booth was really amazing and I saw the new Vulcan new base in there, which was... I guess all right, sounded pretty good, but nothing I'm particularly excited about. And the second cool thing at the Korg booth was of course the Minilog XD module. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of it, but I'm going to tell you right now that it looks like a great module, it sounds amazing, and I love the form factor. And right now I have no reason not to get it. The second honorable mention goes to Reminder from Enjoy Electronics, which is a multi-effect unit that's capable of doing delay, reverb, filter and LFO. It looked really interesting and sounded quite good and if you consider that it also has MIDI CC, something that I really like doing with the Octatrack, it could be a really interesting device. And also the price point at 600 euro as they told me looks to be a pretty reasonable price for a unit like that. The design of the unit is pretty interesting, I like the LEDs and I also like the fact that you can process the tails of the reverb or the delay. One thing that I think the module really needs is the drive section so that you can saturate your sound before it goes into the filter or the delay. I talked to the developers and they said that it's very likely that they're going to add a drive section uh, in software. And my third honorable mention goes to the Digiton keys, of course. I know that there's a lot of hate surrounding the instrument right now, but I actually kind of like it. I love that it has a keyboard. The keyboard has a great feel. And I also think that it's very important that there's a velocity sensitive keyboard attached to an FM device. In addition, it has multiple outputs, which I think is amazing and it could be a very strong selling point for this instrument. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a full video about the Digiton keys. I have some opinions, so I'd be more than happy to share those with you. So now let's go to my top three list of the best instruments or effects that I saw at Superboost. At number three, I'd like to talk about the Soma Pulsar 23. I think this comes as no surprise really. People were super stoked about this and it looks amazing. I spent a total of about five minutes with the machine at the very end of the show on Saturday. There's only one word I can use to describe this machine and this word is brutalistic. It exudes brutalism both in sound and in design and I love it. The sounds coming out of the machine I would describe as raw, animalistic and very angry. And I love the fact that some of the sounds can be quantized from MIDI and some of them can be just looped using an internal looper which adds to the animalistic quality of the instrument. When I first heard the kick drum, I was blown away. It sounded like a prehistoric tribal drum with a mammoth skin used for a drum head. It was just completely mind blowing. In the short time I had with the machine, I couldn't really understand or explore the patch points, but at some point I connected a noise source into a hi-hat trigger and I ended up with an oscillator, which was pretty crazy. The tone that I achieved that way then could be modulated and it sounded really strange, weird and unusual. All in all, very original. And of course the fact that it has MIDI, which means that you can integrate it with more traditional setups, is amazing and I think it's going to be a huge success. There's a slight chance I'm going to get a review copy at some point and as soon as I get it, I'm going to definitely do a full review of this unit. It was amazing. Number two on my list is CraftSense 2.0 from Model. I know that it has been introduced before and I was really in love with the demos, but now I could really get to see it firsthand, listen to it firsthand using headphones and I was totally blown away by the sounds that it produced. I even contemplated joining the Kickstarter when it was announced, but then I ended up purchasing the Mono machine. I didn't have any extra money to invest, so I decided to wait until it's released and then definitely look into that beautiful device. And from having listened to that, I have to tell you one thing. The oscillator quality was completely mind-blowing. For me, there's always something very special about the beautiful, clean-sounding oscillator. And I can give you an example of the Mono machine as one having a super crisp sort of 
high definition sound. Another example of a high quality, beautiful sounding oscillator is of course any Moog synthesizer. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the Valka FM or the Electribe E2 or even the Analog 4, where the oscillators sound okay, but there's nothing special to them. There's no punch, there's no high def feeling when you listen to them. Craft Synth 2.0 definitely has this punch, clarity and high def feeling about the oscillators. Not only does it have a lot of punch, but it also has really good presets that I enjoy browsing through and experimenting with. When I first started tweaking the knobs, I was not very impressed because I felt like there's not enough feel to them. But then I realized the LEDs uh, down the bottom. It was a eureka moment for me because the LEDs would reflect the position of the knob. This made it very intuitive and super quick to navigate and also see where the position of the knob is. And when you had a bipolar knob, then the LEDs would be in the center and it would show you if you're in the positive or negative values. It was amazing. And of course, I cannot compliment model enough for including a proper DIN MIDI in and out. This is amazing. More manufacturers should take their examples and use just standard, regular DIN ports. I love that. And also the MIDI out will work as MIDI through, which means that you can daisy chain a bunch of devices together. It means that you don't have to bring additional MIDI splitters to your shows. Amazing news, amazing solution. And also, according to the developers, it has full MIDI CC control, which is amazing news for me because as you know, I love controlling external synthesizers using the sequencer on the Octatrack, using the LFO on the Octatrack, and also trig conditions. Not to mention the form factor. It's tiny, it's very portable, and it looks very solid, really. In my opinion, it's a must-have for tiny portable digital synthesizers, and I'm hoping to get a review copy at some point in the future to be able to give you a full review and also show how it can be used with the Octatrack. That would be amazing. And then number one on my list is probably the most exciting product I've seen in a while. And I found it at the Game Changer Audio Booth. And it's not the motor synth. I checked the motor synth, I liked it. I think it's a very innovative concept, but what I was really excited about was the plasma rack overdrive. Some of you might know that I used to perform with a singing Tesla coil back in the day, and actually it's very likely that we're going to revive this project very soon. So an overdrive slash fuzz that's based on pure electricity and that has those visual effects that are similar to the Tesla coil is very close to my heart. And I saw this product before in demos from NAMM, and I also saw the Game Changer pedal before, and and with guitar, I was not impressed by that. But then the guys from Game Changer Audio had a dig attack hooked up to the plasma rack. The sheer force and brutality of this overdrive was really mind blowing and really amazing. It was something completely unique, something completely original and very new to my ears. What's important to add in here is that the fuzz effect works as a gate and it is one of the fastest gates I've ever heard in my life. What this means is that by closing this gate can transform the existing sound into something completely different. And also the gate closes with this satisfying sort of visceral crackle, which reminds me a little bit of a Jaguar F-Type or an exhaust sound on a very powerful car. I think that the plasma rack could be a super effective sound design tool with which you can achieve effects not possible with any other plugin or hardware pedal. In addition, it has a powerful EQ section that sounds really good and very MIDI. And most importantly, it has MIDI control, which means that I could control it with my Octatrack. I'll be the first to admit that it is quite expensive, but also you get something that you cannot get with anything else. I think that with this effect, Game Changer Audio really lives up to its name and really changes the game when it comes to saturation and drive. I also managed to record some samples so you can listen to it right here to see sort of how it interacts with the dig attack.
For me, this sound is very unique and very primal, which is something that I really enjoy in an overdrive. All right, so that's it for this episode of Late Night Beats. I was super excited to be invited to Superbooth. I'm definitely going to go next year, and it was a great experience, and I had a lot of fun in Berlin. Let me know in the comments what other instruments you found interesting out there, and maybe you'd like to hear my opinion on anything else that was present at the show. If you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also like this video. Make sure to leave a comment if you have anything to add to this conversation and also follow me on Instagram and on SoundCloud to get more updates from the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great night and take care.